Hi, this is episode three, day 21. And while technically episode three should have been week four, day 28 of the 49 day great route race, it turns out we're going to have to slightly condense the schedule. Why? Because the basil seeds are growing so fast, they won't be able to survive in those little root riot starter plugs much longer. So, if you remember back in episode one, when I told you we'd be feeding trays two through 12s in weeks two, four, and six, well, because these things are growing so fast, we're going to be feeding weeks two, three, and four instead. And then we'll do a final review on week five, day 35, before we start transplanting them into smart pots and growing them out. If we can keep them in here that long, uh, we may have to condense this schedule even more. We'll just have to wait and see. And for the record, I am literally as surprised as you are. Like, what the fuck do I know about basil? I do cannabis. You know what I mean? Anyway, the theme of this episode is still overwatering. And this will still be our second of three feedings. And since the plants are bigger now, during this episode, we're gonna decide if we should remove the Mondi humidity domes, maybe turn on the other two bulbs and the Nickel City Bad Boy T5 lights, maybe increase the volume of Clonex solution we're feeding with from five mils to 10, and because everything is growing so fast, I thought we should do our first product comparisons this week to see if anything stands out yet. So keep watching. Maybe you'll learn something. I hope I do. And this is a seven week, five video series where we grow basil from seed. That way we can test and compare the products I sell in my hydro store. So we can finally once and for all figure out not only what works best, but how best to use the products. And while later in the video, we'll be mixing nutrients, watering, feeding, and comparing plant growth. For now, let's start with an introduction. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss, and this is my hydro store, where I get to meet lots of growers and listen to their stories, which is exactly how I wrote my book, The Grow Book and Equipment Guide, because for years now, I've been collecting and writing down all the questions my customers ask. And if at any time during this video, you want to find your closest hydro store or where you can buy my book or any of the other products you see in this video, just click the opportunity button when it pops up or go to everyhydrostore.com. And now that you know that, let's catch you back up on what's already happened before we go on. In episode one, day one, the theme was promises and temptations. And I introduced you to all the equipment we'll be using and the rules of the Great Root Race. We mixed some pH adjusted 6.0 Ultimate RO water. We planted 600 basil seeds and then we watered everything except tray one, the control tray with Clonex solution. And in episode two, week two, day 14, the topic was root booster or root buster. And we fed trays four through 12 their first of three feedings. And for this episode, I thought I'd start with the lesson, overwatering, because it's a long one. So let's get started with that, and then we'll come back to our chores and feed the trays and compare what we see after that. This lesson is about overwatering, and perhaps the best place for me to start is with one of those things you always hear me say, and it's this. Overwatering is the number one problem growers have. And I can assure you of that because I'm the one answering the questions when they come in my store and call my hotline. And you know how I'm always telling you that pH lockout does not exist and that the pH of your water can be anywhere from five to seven, soil or hydro. Well, this is the perfect place for me to explain why that is. And then you will understand why pH lockout does not exist. And the best way to do that is to treat overwatering like any chronic disease. We start by defining the cause, then the signs and symptoms, 
And finally, the predicted outcome. Because there's nothing new under the sun. And it's the same thing with overwatering. It's always the same process. And once you understand the mechanics of it, I guarantee you will laugh when everybody says pH lockout to you like I laugh. So the first thing to do is to find the cause of overwatering. And from my experience, it means three things to us. First, the roots require certain ratios of air to water, depending on how you're growing which is why you have to bubble air into a DWC system, right? That also means your roots require a certain amount of dry time in relation to bucket size and plant size. And if we look at the explosive growth, high oxygen systems like aeroponics and DWC systems have, what do you notice they all have in common? That's right, a higher air to water ratio surrounding the roots. And when you look at grape growers, how do they water? That's right, on one side of the vine one week and on the other side the next. And do you know why they do it like that? They say it's because making the roots work for it increases both the root mass and the sweetness of the grapes. So, basically, like everything else over time, Group 85 has convinced everybody that more is better and the more of you that listen to their advice, the more of you that fail. Now, I'm not saying to wait until the plant droops from not enough water. Quite the opposite. What I'm actually suggesting is this. Grow in a bucket so big, you don't have to water for at least a week. Instead of a bucket so small that you have to water every day. And statistically, and because I'm the guy answering the questions, I'll tell you. If you're in there watering two or four ounces or some little nonsense every day, or you're in there scratching at the top two inches of the media, trying to determine if you have to water again, stop. Just stop, because that's not how we do it in Club 15. But before I tell you about that, Let's start feeding our control trays, and then later we'll talk a little more about overwatering and what it actually does to the roots. So let's start with trays one, two, and three, our control trays. And these are the trays we use to isolate and baseline our results. For instance, this is tray number one. And this is our baseline tray for what happens when the basil seeds get nothing but pH balanced ultimate RO water. That means this tray doesn't get anything, no clonex solution, no great white microbes, no growth hormones, nothing. And you can see, they don't look so good. And check out these roots, not so much, right? Now, the first thing to notice when we look at tray two is that this is the Clonex Solution control tray. Yes. This tray gets Clonex Solution only and nothing else. And the reason this yes. tray is important is because this is the tray that we're going to be comparing everything else to, right? Like clearly, we're not going to compare all these healthy, well-fed trays to tray number one, a tray that got nothing and call it good, that's why we did this tray, tray number two. So I can show you what feeding with nothing but Clonex solution looks like. So we can create a baseline for the rest of the great root race because everything else except tray three gets Clonex solution in addition to whatever we're testing. And this is tray three. And in it we're isolating and baselining the mycochum from great white because we're adding it to tray five along with the great white and tray seven where we're testing the orca. And that way we're sure where any additional growth is coming from. Now, before we get into tray four, our great white tray, let's get back to today's lesson, overwatering. Okay, we defined overwatering as the roots staying too wet for too long. So now let's examine the effects chronic overwatering has on the roots. First, we start with the roots themselves, and the roots are actually two systems. 
the root hairs that absorb the nutrients and the root shaft that absorbs the water. And together, they regulate how much salt water the, the gets absorbed by the plant. But just like your fingers get all pruny when they stay wet for too long, the root hairs die back first into a fishbone shape and then suddenly your plant can no longer absorb nutrients. Then a few weeks later, when you notice a deficiency on the leaves, you buy whatever nutrient you think is going to fix the problem and you start adding it. But because the root hairs are dead, no matter how much nutrient you add, the plant cannot absorb it. And so what do you do? That's right. You figure, still not enough. And so you add more. But what you didn't know was that there was another process working in the background. And it's osmolarity. Because this whole time, the plant has been absorbing nothing but the water. Trying to balance out the osmolarity from your overfeeding. And what happens next will surprise you. But for now, let's get back to mixing nutrients. Okay, this is tray four, our great white tray. And in this, we're testing microbes, which works on the roots. And while the tops look beautiful, check out the roots. And these are the roots that just get Clonex solution and great white. Blam! Check that out. And if you think that's something, check this out. Now this is tray number five, and it got great white and their microbial food, mycochum. Check that out. That's why I tell you you should always be adding great white. Look at those roots. And now let's feed and look at tray six, the orca tray. And again, just look at those roots. Really spectacular. And then, blam! Take a look at tray seven, which got orca plus their microbial food, mycochum. And just look at how much bigger those roots are. Again, tray one, nothing. Tray two, just Clonex. Tray six, just Orca. And now tray seven, Orca with mycochum. It just keeps getting better. Now, before we feed and water trays 8 through 12, let's go back to the lesson over watering. Okay, now we know over watering is caused by the roots staying soggy for too long, just like your fingers do when they stay wet for too long. And we know that the chronic condition of overwatering leads to bean stalking, chicken clawing, and speed bumps on the leaves. Then she starts to show nutrient deficiencies before she eventually drops. From what looks like dehydration. But when we take a closer look at the actual process she goes through on her way there, the first thing you'll notice with overwatering is that the intervenal spaces on her leaves have speed bumps. And as the days and weeks pass, and as you wonder why everyone else says the shit grows like a weed, your plant will only beanstalk. That means she'll grow tall and lanky because she can't branch out when you overwatered. Or you might notice that she's tiny and miniaturized with chicken clawed leaves with the speed bumps, depending on how bad you overwatered her. And while all that is happening, even more is happening where you can't see, like down in the roots. Because remember how you thought there was a nutrient deficiency? And remember how you bought that nutrient to fix it? And remember how it didn't fix it, so you kept adding more? Well, here's what was really happening. There came a point where you added just a little more nutrient to the water, and suddenly that amount plus everything you fed before it was just enough to push the PPMs high enough in the media that suddenly there was too much salt outside the roots. And suddenly, all the water, 
rushed from the leaves, down the plant, and out into the media, trying to balance out the osmolarity. And bam, all her leaves drop, like she's dehydrated. But when you lift the bucket, the media is still heavy and full of water. Usually it happens about the second week into flower when the leaves suddenly yellow from the bottom up because the roots can't support the sudden growth that happens during the transition into flower. And while you're putting all that together, I'm going to do some more chores and then we'll finish up this episode's lesson over watering. Okay, this is Trey and in it, we're testing Clonex Solution and Root by Humboldt Nutrients. Now when we look at the plants above the Root Riot starter plugs, we can see the Roots by Humboldt Nutrient tray is a little bigger than the Clonex Solution tray. But that's to be expected. Why? Because when we look at the bottom of the Roots by Humboldt Nutrient tray, we can see the Roots are bigger too. And what do I always tell you about Roots? That's right, the bigger the Root, the bigger the fruit. And it's the same thing in tray nine. This is our green fuse tray. And just like this tray, Roots by Humboldt Nutrients, the green fuse acts upon the roots directly. So it doesn't start working until there are roots. That said, I just want to point out that we're 21 days into the great root race and where microbial products like great white and orca can work their magic on just the tiniest of starter roots. And since they've been working their magic since about day three when the seeds popped, products like Roots by Humboldt Nutrient and Green Fuse can only work their magic on the actual roots and have therefore only had the last 10 days or so to really work their magic. So in terms of these two trays, trays eight and nine, we should continue to see even more growth now that there are actual roots. Woo. Tray 10, and this is the green pad tray. And I just want to point out, while the roots may look bigger than the Clonex Solution tray, technically, this was the first tray to start turning yellow. And this was the tray that made me realize we were gonna to have to change the schedule from a 49 day race to a 35 day race. Why? Because yellowing means this was the first tray to run out of nutrients. And what that means is that this tray converted more light into sugar and used up the same nutrients we were feeding to all the other trays faster. How do I know that? Because growing plants is based on the law of minimums. And when we look at the photosynthesis equation, there are only three factors, light, water, and CO2. And that means when we added more CO2 using with the Green Pad Junior, everything else happened at a faster rate. And therefore, this tray consumed its nitrogen faster and suffered a deficiency because of it sooner. And it showed us in a way that no other tray did as evidenced by the yellowing of the leaves. Okay, let's get back to this lesson now. And when we come back, I'll show you trays 11 and 12, our mystery trays, and then we'll finish up this episode. So, we know overwatering rots the root hairs, and that the root hairs are responsible for absorbing the nutrients. And we know that overwatering changes the shape of the plant and beanstalks her before killing her directly. And we also know that more oxygen and not more water at the root zone is what actually increases root growth. So we can conclude that more watering is not necessarily a good thing, and for sure is not directly related to more root growth. Which is why I always tell you pH lockout is never the problem and that it doesn't even exist because I just showed you the entire cause and effect chain of what actually creates the problem known as nutrient lockout. And never once did I mention the pH of the water, which is also why I told you back at the beginning, after watching this video, you'll laugh at anyone that ever tries to tell you it's pH lockout. So in conclusion, what actually happened was that you misdiagnosed the problem and therefore, by definition, could not apply the correct solution, which would have been to decrease watering and add great white microbes to repair the roots. Now, let's go over what we're doing in the next episode and then we'll wrap this one up. 
and I know we were going to decide if we were going to lift the Mondi humidity domes off the trays yet and maybe turn on the other two bulbs in our Nickel City Bad Boy T5 lights and increase the Clonex solution from 5 mils to 10. But after looking at just how great the starts look, there's no way I'm going to increase the lights yet because everything still looks great. And this is an important decision because the temptation is always to do more, isn't it? And more light is an easy conclusion to jump to, right? Because this is all about the light, so they must want more of whatever it is we're doing because more is better, right? Wrong. And I'm going to leave the Mondi domes on and keep the lights at two bulbs for a little while longer. But judging by the paling of the leaves on the plants, I think we should definitely increase the Clonex solution to 10 mils from 5 now. And in the next episode, episode 4, week 4, day 28, humidity and humility, not only are we going to do our third and final feeding, we are really going to get into comparing root growth too. We will again consider if we're feeding with the correct amount of Clonex solution because this week we went from 5 mils to 10 per gallon which is the top of the feeding range suggested on the Clonex bottle. And maybe next week we'll turn on the other two bulbs in our 4 foot 4 bulb bad boy T5s but before we end this video I do want to show a couple of the standout trays again because you can already see the difference. And remember, tray 1 only gets pH adjusted ultimate RO water. And tray 2 only gets Clonex solution. And look at the great white tray and orca tray. And just look at the green fuse and root by Humboldt nutrient trays. And how about the green pad tray? That looks great. Even trays 11 and 12 are mystery trays look great. And there are two weeks left. And it, but anything can happen in that time. We shall see. Before we end the show, here's a couple of words for the sponsors. When you go shopping, don't forget to get Gorilla Tents if you want the most hardcore, heavy-duty tents on the market. And Mondi Humidity Domes for the perfect environment so you can start the perfect clones. And when it comes time to feed those clones, you're going to want to do that with Clonex Solution, the perfect food for your perfect little cuttings. And of course, all these little seedlings are being supplied fresh CO2 from Green Pad Junior CO2 generators, the perfect CO2 for your perfect clones. And don't forget to buy great white microbes for explosive root growth. Finally, something that keeps its promise, great white microbes really does blow your shit up. And don't forget, all this growth is happening under Nickel City Bad Boy four foot four bulb t5 lights okay thanks for watching i'm the grow boss and if you like this video subscribe to the channel and if you have any questions between now and then you can always schedule a consult with me by clicking here trust me i know how much you've spent and how much time you have invested in this and i promise i can fix your garden in about an hour so call me before you quit